TII, item 476, December 17th, 2018, iOS 12.1.2. Welcome to Today in iPhone. Yeah, I like it a lot. Today in iPhone. Hey, call it! Oh, yeah. My beautiful iPhone, which I never have out of my hand and that I do everything with and has become an extension of who I am. Today's episode is brought to you by Eero. To get $100 off the Eero base unit and two beacons package and one year Eero Plus, please visit Eero.com slash TII and to check out, enter promo code TII. Welcome to the show. I'm your scrub and you are listening to the Today in iOS podcast. First up, I want to thank Jeff for sending the music here in the background. Jeff wrote, Hi Rob, I made this song Kaleidoscope using the GarageBand app on my iPhone. For free downloads and more music, follow me at JeffJ6 on Twitter. Regards, Jeff Chai. Well, thanks, Jeff, for the music. And folks, I will put the full song at the end of the episode. I also want to thank Wayne for sending in the artwork for today's episode. Wayne wrote the following. Hey, Rob, here's a picture of the Apple Store in Holyoke, Mass. Regards, Wayne P. Well, thanks, Wayne, for sending this in. Folks, you can see this artwork in the free chat app via the bonus button for episode 476 or at Instagram.com slash todayinios and also at Facebook.com slash todayinios. If you have some artwork and or music you have created on your iOS device that you would like to share with the audience, please email to me at todayinios at gmail.com and please make sure to include which app or apps you use to create said artwork and or music. Apple, in a little bit of a surprise move today, on the 17th of December, released iOS 12.1.2 Gold Master to the Masses. This is for iPhones only and is focused on what all good double dot updates are, bug fixes. And in particular, ones around the new eSIM feature for the iPhone XR, XS, and XS Max. It is also addressing an issue that could affect cellular connectivity in Turkey for this year's 10 series. And other rumors say this also bypasses a few patents from Qualcomm that Qualcomm was trying to use to keep the iPhones off the market in China. Should you release the hounds? Well, if you plan on using the eSIM feature in the iPhone X series or already using it, absolutely. Most reports only talk about the iPhones for iOS 12.1.2, but I also had it available for my iPad Pro, but that might be the beta version. If you have an iPhone X, the 2017 original iPhone 10 or earlier, you know, that will, no real rush to update. And you might just want to wait until the weekend update. But if you are running a 10S, 10S Max or 10R, and you are planning on using the eSIM feature or are using the eSIM feature, then absolutely release the hounds. Everyone else, uh, you can take a deep breath and wait till the weekend. Back in January, Apple stock dipped a little bit. Why did it dip? Well, because analyst Ming-Chi Kuo at the time said iPhone 10s were not selling as well as expected. Also around that time, he was saying there would be a new and improved AirPod introduced in the fall of 2018. So, um, yeah, not so much or at all with either of those. Yet last week, when Kuo once again said iPhones were not selling as well as expected, Apple stock dipped again, this time a little bit more. Ming-Chi Kuo is not even close to 50% on his predictions as far as getting it right. Matter of fact, he's not even really close to what you'd consider a good baseball hitter. Yes, the press treats him like he's never wrong. And based on some recent supplier reports, it sure looks like Kuo is wrong once again. Of course, Ming can make up whatever he wants on unit sales numbers now as He knows Apple is no longer reporting those numbers, which means no way to measure the analyst's accuracy. Ming gets way too much credit for his predictions. He throws a lot of crap at the wall. Not all of it hits or sticks. Just two months ago, he was saying the iPhone XR sales were great. Now he says they stink. He is going both ways with predictions. Actually, he's done that for a long time. And then the press seems to only remember when he was right, not all the times he was wrong, like a year ago when he said the iPhone X sales were lower than expected. Kind of like what he said last week for the iPhone sales again. Did I mention on the last episode, this is a good time to buy Apple stock as it seems to be beaten down by less than reliable reports. One thing that is reliable is Apple just announced they are investing $1 billion to build a new campus in North Austin, Texas. 
They are also establishing new sites in Seattle, San Diego, and Culver City, plus expanding in Pittsburgh, New York, and Boulder over the next three years. Apple said it added 6,000 jobs to its U.S. workforce in 2018 and now employs 90,000 people in the U.S., versus the 18,000 full-time employees worldwide back at the end of 2006, before the iPhone was announced. So kudos to Apple and all its employees. We used to talk about jailbreaking a lot on the show, at some point way too much according to some of the listeners, but clearly that has not been the case for some time. Barely ever even mention jailbreaking anymore. And when we do, it's usually not good news for jailbreaking, and that is the case here. The Cydia store is no longer being supported. From Zurich, the creator of Cydia, quote, The reality is that I wanted to shut down the Cydia store entirely before the end of the year and was considering moving the timetable up after receiving the report to this weekend. This service loses me money, and it's not something I have any passion to maintain, unquote. And just to make sure it is clear, Cydia will still be around, but the Cydia store is no more which is what managed the payments for app devs on the Cydia side. Well, for some app devs. While jailbreaking is not completely dead, it sure looks to be mostly dead, and I don't see any Miracle Max coming to its rescue anytime soon. To which I say sorry to all fans of jailbreaking out there. Into the email bag. Hi Rob, Apple Pay is finally coming to Australia's largest bank. Regards, Steve from Brisbane. And Steve is talking about Commonwealth Bank recently announcing that next month it will become the second of Australia's big four banks to support Apple Pay. They are the largest of the four banks of the big four, and it seems they finally caved to customer pressure, which they basically said with this quote, quote, we recently wrote to our customers asking them what the bank could do differently, and we received lots of excellent suggestions. One of the things that we heard repeatedly from our customers is that they want Apple Pay, and we're delighted to be making it available in January 2019, unquote. Well, congrats to those down under, and it is likely the remaining two of the four big banks will also fall in line shortly and offer support for Apple Pay in 2019 as well. Someone put together a list of the most Googled should I questions based by state. Some were quite predictable. Should I lose weight, or should I diet, or should I fast? Combine those were number one, with 11 of 50 states having that as number one, including Kansas. Should I vote was number two, seven states having that as a choice. Evidently, four states have an issue with excess of hair growth, with should I cut my hair being the top answer or question, and that was Arizona, New Jersey, North Carolina, and Ohio. Should I buy Bitcoin was number one in Nevada, New Hampshire, and Rhode Island, which led Minnesota to ask, should I freeze my credit? Should I vape was number one in Indiana and Michigan. Really? Washington State did bring us back to respectability by saying, should I delete Facebook? Kudos to you, Washington State. And I mention all of this because Massachusetts, the number one should I in that state was, should I update to iOS 12? Which brings us all back to Idaho, Maine, New Mexico, Oregon, and West Virginia, where they all asked, should I care? I went back and looked at an article written two and a half months ago that was talking about all the major complaints about the iPhone XS and XS Max. And where are those today? Well, ChargeGate, that was one. That was the iPhone sometimes would not charge if it was asleep. That issue was, pun intended, put to rest with an update. Antenna Gate 2.0, yeah, don't remember that one all that well. Guess some Verizon network users were getting less than stellar reception at one point. It might have had something to do with the Wi-Fi connectivity issues that some reported, which was a bug that was fixed. Again, a small bug, not memorable. Some people were complaining about pictures looking smooth. Um, yeah, Apple got on stage and talked about that feature you can turn off the new smart HDR if you don't like it. And by you, I mean the few people that complained. Evidently, they figured it out as well. They stopped complaining. So what are the major complaints about the iPhone XS, XS Max now three months after launch? No, I mean, really, what, what are they? 
I'm asking you because I don't see any new articles about this. Funny how people overreact when new iPhones are launched and try to add gate to the end of everything in hopes that their blog post will go viral. To this, I call it complaint gate. But you know what? Not having anything real to complain about does not stop some lawyers from trying to get their pounds of flesh from Apple. Enter, stage left, lawsuit that alleges Apple's iPhone XS marketing images deceptively hid the notch. This is all about the artwork Apple used in marketing for the XS and XS Max, where it was black in that part of the image, making it look like the notch. Well, there was no notch. This is absolutely silly. I mean, which means Apple will likely wind up paying out a few hundred million dollars for this stupid lawsuit. Apple was not overly concerned, however, about all this lawsuits because they're still using the same artwork that downplays the notch on the Apple.com site as the first image you see when you go to the iPhone XS and XS Max page. Again, is it deceptive? It just probably a good choice of artwork to use in that case because it does downplay the notch. But I think everybody knows the notch is there. It's silly. It's stupid. I hate talking about these lawsuits. Oh, wait, my wife says, don't never use the word hate unless we're talking about Xavier. All right. Anyway, on with the next thing. We are heading to my parents' house over the holidays, and my kids were very excited to hear I purchased Euro Wi-Fi for my parents for Christmas this year. My oldest son even asked that we could set it up as soon as we get to their house. Their current Wi-Fi is horrible. It does not come close to covering the whole house, and in most of the house where it does connect, it is so slow. And my dad cannot even connect using his iPad in bed. They really need a major Wi-Fi upgrade, and that is where Eero comes to the rescue. For Christmas this year, I'm getting them the Eero base unit plus two beacons, which will bathe my parents' entire home in Wi-Fi bliss. Eero, E-E-R-O, makes a Wi-Fi mesh network for your home. And as I've mentioned on this show previous episodes, Eero offers you the fastest Wi-Fi I've ever tested. And this is the second generation Eero unit, which added a third 5 gigahertz radio. And it is a mesh network, just like at the office buildings, but now for your home. You only need to hardwire the, and connect the base station unit. The beacons you just plug into any wall outlet, and they even have a nightlight. Never think about Wi-Fi again. To get $100 off the Eero base unit and two beacons package and one year of Eero Plus, please visit Eero.com slash TII. And at checkout, enter promo code TII. With Eero Plus, you get total network protection with the ability to block malicious and unwanted content across your entire network. You get advanced security, content blocking, and ad blocking. Eero even automatically pushes out software updates to make sure you have the latest security protection for your home network. And the units also have thread radio for low-power devices like my parents' ring doorbell or other Wi-Fi-enabled IoT devices. Again, to get $100 off the Eero base unit and two beacons package and one year of Eero Plus, Please visit Eero.com slash TII and at checkout, enter promo code TII. As I've said before, this is the best, best, best Wi-Fi I've ever tested or heard of. And thanks, Eero, for unleashing the wireless power of all my Apple products and for allowing me to check off my parents' Christmas gift. Hey, Rob, this is Tony from Johnstown, Pennsylvania. I was just listening to your show, and you had asked about the AirPods. How long did they last on a phone call as compared to the day that you got them? I got mine on launch day, like you said, right after 2017. I'm actually talking to you on them right now. I'm like you, I only use one at a time because I use them at work and I have to hear my name being paged and my phone have my desk ringing. However, I can definitely tell degradation since the day I bought them because I use one at a time, like I said, and I charge them every day on my lunch break. I start at 8.30 a.m., usually listen to podcasts all day and then charge them at 12.30 p.m. They used to last well until 12.30 p.m., you know, when I first got them. And nowadays, I have to stick one in the charging case well before. So, I mean, I don't know exactly how long on a phone call, but I can definitely tell that there was a lot of degradation there since launch day when they are brand new. Love the show, brother. Have a great day. Tony, thank you for the feedback. Lots of feedback on AirPods. We're going to get into some more here now. Hi, Rob. I received the first 
patch of AirPods, thanks to push notification, if I recall. And I just got off a 23 minute phone call with one earpiece and it's beeping low battery. Like you, I only use one at a time for calls. So it's never a problem. They seem to charge in five, in five minutes or so. When I listen to music, I can get, it seems like two plus hours out of them. So I noticed the battery is not as good as it once was, but good enough that I feel no need to replace them at this time. From Joe G on Google Plus. Thank you, Joe. Hi, Rob. Long time listener and first time emailer. I have had my AirPods from the first time they were available two years ago. Yes, my batteries have taken a hit with the left barely lasting an hour and the right lasting about one and a half hours. I listen to podcasts every day while at work on a 10 hour shift. They are constantly used one at a time as we are not allowed to wear both at the same time. Like you, I'm desperate for a new set and hopefully they will arrive in the new year. Yours sincerely, Stephen Huxtable. Thank you, Stephen. And yeah, I'm, I'm, folks, I'm looking at it uh, this week, past week since the last episode. And I, <laughs> I'm not making it on the one of them. I'm not making it more than 25 minutes. Yeah, it's giving me the low beep. The other one is going about 35, 40 minutes. I'm feeling like I need to do something here. Hey, Rob. Justin from Pennsylvania. I'm calling to leave feedback about my AirPods. Mine are close to the two-year mark, not quite there. I don't know how hard they were to get at the time when they first came out. I would say my AirPods, I'm seeing something similar with the call time. I'm getting close to an hour per AirPod. Now, my use cases, I almost never listen to music on them. I almost only listen to podcasts. So I've always been juggling one ear pod back and forth for the most part. But I use them super heavily all the time. I use them at work. I use them at home. I use them, basically, they're like series in my ear all the time. They're so comfortable because uh, the, their design just feels so great, so good in my ear. And I just don't, honestly, sometimes I forget they're there. But I would just say, as far as call quality goes, I haven't had too many complaints. Now and then, I've had other people say they can't hear me on my AirPod. But I would say the battery life, I'm definitely seeing a decline. Unfortunately, I guess it's the same deal as with the phones. Your battery will degrade, and these are little tiny batteries. So I, I would have to agree that my battery time and my right ear pod, uh, AirPod is, is worse than the left because I use the right one more. I'd say I'm about an hour, not quite as bad as the 45 minutes you get, but I don't know that I ever got two hours on an AirPod when a phone call. So I don't know if I keep my volume too high or something that I wasn't getting the two hours to start, but uh, I kind of seen a small drop off. So I would honestly, as soon as I feel like these aren't working for me, I'm buying another pair. They're my go-to every day, all the time headphones. I love them. So thank you very much, Rob. Have a great day. Bye. Justin, as always, thanks for the feedback. Back to the email bag. Hi, Rob. I have a first gen 12.9 inch iPad Pro, which I bought refurbished just to read magazines on the Xeno app. I have the 16 gigabytes free out of the 32 gig that it came with. And the Xeno app with data is taking up 9.4 gig of that space. I used to read mags on my fourth gen iPad 9.7, but it's still running iOS 6. I prefer the skeuomorphic design. And I could no longer run Xeno on iPhone iOS 6 and didn't want to update. For AirPods, I got my AirPods on launch day, so I've had them a fair while now and have used them every day. I use my AirPods all day at work and frequently have put one of them back in the case to charge. I used to get about five hours of podcast listening when new, but now I find that the right AirPod has more of a faulty battery than the left, maybe because I've used the right one a lot more often to pause podcasts, and it will give me a low battery sound as soon as it drops below the 75% mark. So it's not letting me use the full charge. The left one still gives me a, at least a two, per, two to three hours of listening before it needs charging. I have started only pausing with the left one and setting the microphone to left only to maximize the time I can use both AirPods together, but the right one still dies much sooner. Do you know if I can get the battery replaced or can you only buy the whole uh, right AirPod? Regards, Matt in Adelaide, Australia. Well, thank you, Matt, for the feedback. I am not sure yet what you can do as far as uh, getting them repaired. I think it's there is no repair on them. I think they are replaced. Uh, 
But here's an email from someone that uh, also had an issue that might answer a little bit here. Hi, Rob. Like you, I was having problems with my AirPods battery life. I bought mine on December 27th, 2016, so they were not in warranty. I was down to around two hours before getting the warning sound for recharging. Called Apple, and they booked me into the nearest Apple store for a genius appointment. When I got there, they asked me to confirm that the problem was with the AirPods and not the case. They said that they don't have any way to check the AirPods, so they would replace them. They only had a single AirPod in stock, so they arranged to have a new pair shipped. I was then contacted later the same day by an Apple representative who took all of my details and placed a hold for £145 on my credit card. It was explained that they would only take this payment if the faulty AirPods were not returned to Apple. The whole thing was very easy, and I ended up with a pair of new AirPods in my old case. Regards, Stuart Duncan, Dundee, Scotland. Well, thank you, Stuart. I think I need to reach out to Apple and see what I can do about getting my AirPods replaced like you did. Hey, Rob. Wayne Henderson here from MediaVoiceOvers.com, calling in with my thoughts on my AirPods that I've had for two years now, basically. I have used them almost every single day for the past two years and absolutely love my AirPods. I use them mostly to listen to podcasts and audiobooks with an occasional phone call here and there because it's convenient to be hands-free, so why not just do it? As far as the battery life after two years, it is slightly less, but I think I'm doing okay. Right now, I usually start the day listening in my right AirPod, and I believe I can go for about three hours on a charge before I get the beep and need to change it out and then put in the left one, and it goes for about three hours as well. And so they're working very, very well. I just think it's such a fantastic product. I did notice the other day when I had to make a lot of phone calls and wait on hold for literally almost two hours that being on a phone call seems to eat up the battery life a lot more than just listening to podcasts and audiobooks. But absolutely love my AirPods, one of the best Apple devices in recent years. Oh, and on a side note, a couple of times a year, I do clean my AirPods and I use that Loctite uh, L-O-C-T-I-T-E fun tack uh, mounting putty. I saw some YouTube videos on how to clean your AirPods using this Loctite, and it works amazingly well. Thanks, Rob, and go pack go. Wayne, thank you for your feedback and for the link to the video. I have a link in the show notes to the, the video using the Loctite to clean your AirPod case and AirPods. And very that looks like a very easy way to do that. So thank you. Now, I think the general gist of all these messages are everybody really loves their AirPods. So if you were hearing all this and thinking, oh, no, I don't want to buy someone AirPods this year for Christmas because the batteries are going to die in two years. Well, yes, but they're really, really great, and it's worth it for those two years. Now, maybe you can get three years, four years out of them, depending on the usage. Um, Maybe the new ones are making now batteries last a little bit better. I'm going to contact Apple and we'll see what they say to me about mine that are two years old. I got them on launch day as well. Uh, but the long and the short is, I love my AirPods. I use them all the time. And that's prob- the reason why the batteries are going, because it is a small device. So there's a limitation there. But I don't think anyone that was reporting in here regretted having the AirPods. I know I saw something on the Google Plus community about people saying, uh, well, they weren't going to get them now because of this. Now, again, yes, the Battery life has degraded for me and a, f- and a few of the other people, as you heard here earlier, um, after two years, but it's still well worth it. It is a great, great accessory. And, and with AirPods, you can also set them to better listen to podcasts. And there's some things you can do with the AirPods you can't do with any of the third-party headphones that are out there. There was an article from September titled iPhone 11, iPhone XI, or iPhone Lemur. Lemur. Uh, question mark. Apple still has a 2019 iPhone naming problem. And I agree. The current naming, mm, it's an issue. And next year, Apple will have to address it. And it might be as simple as iPhone with the X symbol, iPhone 10 2019, or iPhone 10 Max 2019, and iPhone 10R 2019. Similar to what they do with laptops. 
and just de-emphasize um, uh, the your part and stick with the product name. Someone else I saw suggested that iPhone 2019 for the next gen 10s and iPhone Max 2019 for the next gen XS or 10s Max. So, uh, it gets frustrating. And then iPhone R. Uh, for 2019 for the next gen iPhone 10R. And in 2019 all the, all that changes each year. So it's really going to be frustrating getting around what Apple's going to start doing here. Um I think a lot of the rumors throughout 2019 are going to be the rumors that deal with the names. What's the names going to be? You know, it's a lot more interesting to talk about numbers of cameras and megabytes of cameras than it is the number on the side of the box. Just saying. While this next one under, say what? Google CEO Sundar Pichai must be a big fan of Orange is the New Black and Shawshank Redemption because evidently he wants to go to jail. He recently was before the House Judiciary Committee and said, quote, protecting the privacy and security of our users has long been an essential part of our mission, unquote. Um, mission failed? So either Google is really, really, really bad at hitting mission goals or Pachai totally lied to Congress. But hey, never blame on incompetence that which can easily be explained by malice. That's the new slogan in Mountain View these days. It replaces the old don't be evil slogan. Hey, remember that article way, way back when where Google CEO talked about, quote, protecting the privacy and security of our users, unquote? Yeah, I think it was a few seconds ago, actually. Well, one article that goes to kind of sort of blame on malice part is that Google was sued in the UK recently for tracking and collecting iPhone users' data. Hmm, maybe they were just trying to protect the data. I'm sure it was just a silly misunderstanding. Oh, wait, wait. Google is accused of bypassing the privacy settings of iPhone owners, Safari browsers settings, so they could divide the users into different categories for advertisers? Well, I'm sure it was only for a few people. Um, wait, wait, what? 4.4 million users in the UK were affected? Okay, well, well, maybe they just looked at data like iPhone versus iPad or something like that. Oh, oh, so actually Google collected information including race, physical, and mental health, political leaning, sexuality, social class, financial, shopping habits, and location data, and then aggregated the users who were put into groups to make it easier for advertisers to target them? Well, at least it was just in the UK and not anywhere else, right? Oh, oh, wait, wait, never mind. Google already paid $39.5 million to settle claims in the US relating to the same practice. I wonder what Google has to say about all this. Oh yeah, quote, Protecting the privacy and security of our users has long been an essential part of our mission, unquote. Hi, Rob. It's uh, Dan Curtin from Los Angeles area. Um, I just got my uh, iPhone XR on Monday, and I've been using it all week. Um, really like it. It's a little funny getting used to the, um, the gestures as opposed to having a home screen, I mean, a home bu uh, button. But I... Um, I really like the speed of it. It's, it's very, very zippy and fast, and I had no um, problem downloading my uh, from my backup uh, in the cloud. So I'm pretty pleased with it overall so far. And uh, if anything does come up, I'll let you know. Thanks so much for your, all you do in this um, in your podcast. Thank you very much. Bye, Dan. Thank you for your feedback. Into the email bag we go. Hi, Rob. I have also noticed increased wackiness redictation since iOS 12. As others have observed, often I will dictate something, it comes up correctly or mostly. Then often after I hit the send button, I notice that what was there has been altered often drastically, so I use voiceover, but this bug seems to happen for everyone. Before all of this, iOS dictation drove me crazy, as so often it would take my sentence and randomly change the pronouns. She might become you, for example. This often had the effect of radically changing the meaning of a sentence. Think? 
Perhaps Apple could use Google's dictation, which works oh so much better. Keep up the great work. Regards, Kevin Barry. Kevin, thank you for the feedback. Back to the email bag. Dear Rob, just recently listened to episode 475. I, too, chose a 64-gig size iPad Pro over the next higher capacity. I was hesitant at first, thinking there would not be enough memory, but I'm currently using 34 of that 64. I have over 2,100 photos and videos and over hundreds of apps installed. The next incremental size of 256 was just a bit too much. Regards, Ronald. Thank you, Ronald. Hi, Rob. First, happy holidays uh, to you and your family. I heard someone call in the show last week saying they find 64 gigs more than enough for their iPad Pro. Well, I'm in the same boat. I've had a 64 gig iPad Mini 4 for the last few years using about half of the storage. I decided to treat myself to the new 11 inch Pro and went with the 64 gig option. As always, I set it up as a new device rather than restoring a backup for my old device. I installed the apps. I thought I'd need with 14 gig photo library in iCloud plus Microsoft Office apps, a bunch of photo apps, too many if I'm honest, and a handful of games, and I'm not even using half the storage. I don't play many games on the iPad, just a couple. I don't do much photo work and no video creation. I browse, watch Netflix or Plex, take notes, and read Word documents. Maybe a pro device was an indulgence for but for me, 64 gig has been absolutely plenty, which is a relief given the price. Keep well and warm and keep up the good work. Regards, Andrew A. from Wimbledon, London, UK. Well, thank you, Andrew, for your feedback and Ronald for your feedback. Sounds like 64 might be enough gigabytes for some. Hey, Rob, Matt from Wisconsin here. How are you? wanted to let you guys know of something weird that happened to me with my iPhone 8, and I don't know if this is just an isolated incident with my phone itself or a bug that other people have experienced. My battery got low, and I told it to turn on low power mode. I was out of town, and luckily I had an extra charger with me, and I plugged it in. Low power mode was turned off as normal after a sufficient charge, and my screen was still dimming. Even after low power mode was turned off, I looked through the settings to see if maybe I had bumped something or maybe iOS 12.1 had a bug in it that was keeping low power mode active, but everything was fine. After I reset network settings, everything is normal. So if anyone else experiences that issue, there's your problem, or your uh, solution, rather. Once again, if anyone is experiencing that issue after low power mode has been turned off automatically by your phone, just do a reset network settings, reconnect to your network, and you should be fine. There you go, and talk to you soon. Matt, thank you for your feedback, as always. Hey, Siri. Okay, Google. That's like comparing apples and not apples. Hey, Siri. Okay, Google. Very funny. Rob. I mean, not funny. Ha ha. But funny. Hey, Siri. Okay, Google. Not exactly. But I offer no resistance to helpful assistance. Hey, Siri. Alexa. You know I can hear you, right? Hey, Siri. Okay, Google. I think you've got the wrong assistant. Rob. Hey, Siri. Alexa. Wow. Awkward. Today's show was again brought to you by Era, which is by far the fastest and best Wi-Fi I have ever tested. To get $100 off the Eero base unit plus two beacons package on one year of Eero Plus, please visit Eero.com slash TII and at checkout, enter promo code TII. And before we go today, I want to remind you to send in your feedback to the show, 206-666-6364. That's 206-MOONDOG. Or record your feedback and email it to the show at todayinios at gmail.com. Feedback can be a question or comment for something someone said on this episode, or it can be a question or rant you have about something else. An app, a product review, good or bad, as long as it's iOS related, it is welcomed. I am always looking for new artwork to feature that you have created on an iOS device. Just put some TII branding on it and send it in. And of course, we are always looking for more music created on an iOS device to play on the show. It's your show and your feedback is greatly desired. Also, don't forget to check out our moderated Google Plus community 
by going to todayinios.com slash community. And a quick reminder, if you are an app dev or an iBook author, email me if you want your promo, uh, if you want your app or iBook featured in the promo giveaway segment for free. We just need the five promo codes or more to give away. Simply email me at todayinios at gmail.com and please include a 60 second or less audio review of your app or iBook indicating you are the dev or the author. Also, when you send in the promo codes, please make sure to let me know when they expire. Finally, check out the TII app, which is free to you. Search for TII in the iTunes App Store. It is the best way to consume the show and to get push notifications each time a new episode of TII is released. It's fully voiceover friendly, of course. Please go right now and download the TII app or get the update. And thanks for a great 2018. I am going to take some time off for the holidays. I will be back around the week of January 7th. If there is anything big or breaking news-wise, I can always release a special episode or a blog post. But what I would love to hear from you in this time off is what is your favorite iOS-related gift or accessory that you received or gave this holiday season? Give us a call on that. You know the number. Or just shoot us an email. And I do wish all of you a safe and happy holiday season and new year. I'll talk with you in 2019. Until the next time, I'm your host, Rob, reminding you to Happy New Year. This show is hosted on Libsyn.com and part of the Libsyn Media Network. If you are looking for podcast hosting, go to Libsyn.com, that's L-I-B-S-Y-N.com, for hosting for your podcast and creation of your own smartphone app. The Today in iOS podcast can be found everywhere you listen to podcasts. That includes Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, Overcast, Stitcher, and everywhere else you listen to audio. Oh, the world can be